How to increase the longevity bacteria found in Japanese centenarians beyond the diet? That's something I'm going to talk about today, so stick around. Hi, my name is Hachiak Takamiya. I am the author of the Ikigai Diet and Ikigai Biohacking. This is the continuation of the series about the longevity bacteria found in Japanese centenarians. Two videos ago, I shared with you this video. The actual title was What is the longevity bacteria discovered in Japanese centenarians? The Kyotango study explained. In the video, I talked about Kyotango region in Kyoto Prefecture. There is a study called Kyotango longevity cohort research happening there because Kyotango is in the spotlight as a longevity hot zone at the moment. And in this research, they discovered that what they call longevity bacteria is abundant in the gut of senior citizens in Kyotango region. And that bacteria is butyrate producing bacteria. And in the last video, and the title was How to Increase the Longevity Bacteria Found in Japanese Centurions, I shared with you how to increase butyrate producing bacteria, especially through your diet. For example, eating a lot of food with highly fermentable dietary fiber, and foods with vitamin B1, vitamin D, and omega-3 fatty acid, DHA and EPA. Also, fermented food, especially fermented food that has bifidobacteria, lactic acid bacteria, and natto bacteria, especially natto. It is critical to have bacillus subtilis, this natto bacteria, because this bacteria help bifidobacteria and lactic acid lactic acid bacteria do their job and that will help butyrate producing bacteria does its job so the kind of harmony of all those bacteria is critical now in this video today i'll share with you other measures than diet you can take to grow butyrate producing bacteria. Again, I am referencing this book, Laksan Kin o Fuyaseba, Ken Chōju ni Nareru. The English translation is like, you can increase your health band if you increase butyrate producing bacteria. The book is written by Dr. Yuji Naito, a researcher of this Kyotango longevity cohort study. First thing is sleep. Dr. Naito says good sleep helps increase butyrate producing bacteria. He doesn't specify what good sleep is, but just generally speaking, you know, sleep well. That's what he says. According to Dr. Matthew Walker, who is a sleep expert, there are certain specific measures you can take to optimize your sleep. For example, sleeping for eight hours, turning all lights off, including dim light when you sleep. So sleep in darkness. Finish eating three hours before sleep. No screen time one hour before sleep. No smartphone, no computer. And instead, you can have a bath or sauna during that period. For details, I made a video called Hack Your Sleep to Boost Your Spirituality. So please watch this video. Good sleep is related to your circadian rhythm. Basically, living according to the circadian rhythm can optimize your sleep. And circadian rhythm is another thing that can help you increase butyrate producing bacteria according to Dr. Naito. So how can you align yourself with a circadian rhythm? Again, Dr. Naito doesn't talk about specific you know, measures, yeah? But as far as I know, 
uh, for example, morning sunlight exposure is critical and morning cold exposure. That is why I take cold shower in the morning to, to align myself with a circadian clock. Evening sunlight exposure around sunset time is also good. For detail, please watch my other video, and that is called Circadian Rhythm versus Circadian Rhythms for Health and Longevity. The other thing is exercise. Exercise can help increase butyrate producing bacteria. What kind of exercise? According to Dr. Naito, a moderate intensity exercise that leaves you slightly breathless. And you do that for about 30 minutes to 60 minutes a day, three times a week. He doesn't specify what moderate intensity exercise is other than, you know, this expression. But I think this is pretty much like zone two exercise. You know, heart rate zone. We have a zone one to zone five. And zone two exercise is 60% to 70% of your maximum heart rate or an activity where you can have a conversation, but it's kind of difficult. You cannot easily have a conversation, but you can manage to have a conversation. That's a sort of zone two level. And it changes depending on individuals. For some people, brisk walking is zone two. For others, jogging or running is zone two, or any other aerobic exercises such as swimming, cycling. And in the case of Kyotango, many senior citizens walk and they do brisk walking. They tend to walk fast. But by the way, this is the same throughout Japan. Yeah, senior citizens don't work out. They go walking, but they don't go running so much. I mean, some people do, but mostly walking is more common than jogging and gardening. So their physical activities are gardening and walking. Those are very common activities among senior citizens in Japan. And you know, Dr. Naito says doing it, you know, 30 to 60 minutes a day, three times a week. I think that is roughly the same uh, with what is usually recommended. Uh, for example, according to Center for Disease Control and Prevention, uh, there are several examples. But if you look at example one, that is about the moderate intensity aerobic activity. It says, 150 minutes every week. For example, 30 minutes a day, five days a week. And Dr. Peter Atia says 180 minutes of zone two. So somewhere between 150 minutes to 180 minutes of zone two is good. And according to Andrew Huberman, doing 150 to 180 minutes of zone two training can stimulate your brain too. It, it's good for your brain health as well. So if we were to use the example given by Dr. Naito, um, if you do the 30 minutes one three, time, three times a week, that's 90 minutes. And if you do 60 minutes one three times a week, that's 180 minutes. Yeah. Uh, in my case, I do about 150 minutes of zone two per week. I do two 45 minutes jogging and then one 60 minutes jogging. I like to do just one 60 minutes long, low intensity aerobic exercise because according to Dr. Tommy Wood, 60 minutes of low intensity cardio which is 50 to 60 percent VO2 max, which is roughly kind of similar to zone two, can boost autophagy similarly to a 72 hour fast. That's incredible, isn't it? Yeah. So if I do that once a week, then I can activate autophagy, you know, once a week, just almost like doing, you know, 72 hours fast. So yeah, that's why I want to incorporate this like a long uh, aerobic activity once a week. Also, I like the rhythm of three times a week uh, because you get to have rest two days. And in my case, I do strength training on my rest days. So 
Monday, Wednesday, Fridays are cardio day, but Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturdays are strength training days. But it's up to you. Just find a way that is comfortable and sustainable for you. That is the most important. It is doable within your schedule and doable within your fitness level. Doability is very important. And you want to feel happy about your regimen. You want to feel comfortable and, and enjoy your exercise. That is very important to increase butyrate producing bacteria as well. I'll talk more about it in the next video. So in the next video, uh, including that, I will share with you what activities are not good for butyrate producing bacteria. If you're interested in this sort of holistic approach, please read Ikigai Biohacking. Okay, thank you for watching. Again, my name is Hachiaki Takamiya, the author of the Ikigai Diet and Ikigai Biohacking. If you like this video, please give me your thumb up and subscribe to my channel and please leave your comment. How do you sleep and how do you exercise? Thank you. Well, I will see you in the next video. Live with your Ikigai!